Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for all things digital photography. Tips, tricks, inspiration, you name it, it's on this show. My name is RC, and I'm very, very excited to have a special guest today. We have Mac Oskowski in talking to us a little bit about some photography gear that he carries when he's traveling. Before we do that, however, I think it's a good time for us to check in with Mr. Scott Bourne. Scott's got a great new book, all based on the iPad. Take a look at this. Hey everybody, D-Town TV, my name is RC. I am here with Mr. Scott Bourne. Scott, what's going on, man? Hey buddy, good to see you. All right, now, I had to stop him. <laughs> I had to, because he was running around with his iPad and everybody's like slack jaw about this one thing that he's working on. I figured it was a good time for us to kind of let all you guys see just what he's doing. Go ahead and bring that up. I, I think okay. that that's really cool, dude. So this is a new book that Rich Harrington and I wrote called The Basic Beginner's Guide to Photography, Light, and Exposure. And it's made with iBook Author, the new free tool from Apple. Okay. And all 70 million people who own an iPad can currently see this book once it makes it into the iBook store. As we're talking here today, it's a few days from being approved. Okay. But we have a, an advanced copy of it since we wrote it. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, this will work on any iPad, and it takes advantage of all this cool new stuff that's free from Apple in iBook Author. And if you want a way to show your work in a book-like form, this is something you need to know about. Now, there are some immediate arguments against it, RC, in that, well, only 70 million people can see it. Well, where Ooh. I come from, that's, a, that's, that's, kind a, of, that's kind of a big market, but, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, it eventually will be seeable on any iOS device. Apple's right. going to eventually make these work on probably even their computers. Right, right, right. And you can generate a standard PDF from this. The negative of that is you lose all the interactivity. And that's the part that kind of threw me. Yeah. I, I was looking at some of that stuff, and I was like, that's amazing. Take me through some of that stuff. Okay, so we're going to look here at the book. The way it's set up now is we're in chapter view, and we can scroll through and see each chapter and then on the bottom of the page, you see the actual pages that we can go to. So I can pick any page, like here's a picture I want to look at, and click on it, and, uh, and then we can just simply scroll through the book a page at a time. And one of the things that I thought was really nice from this stuff is it looks like a book. Oh, yeah. It looks yeah. really nice. So the presentation and the layout of that kind they of stuff They did a great just... job with this free software. I can't believe they gave it away for free. But yeah, all the normal things you'd see in a book with pretty pictures and text are there. But what's interesting is the interactivity stuff. So here, Rich and I are teaching about color temperature and the Kelvin scale. Okay. So we have this thing here that explains it. And in a few pages, we actually have a quiz. Take me to that. We're going to go to the <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see that. We'll go to the quiz real quick. Because it's like, now, a lot of people don't know that, like, my background's in education. So I spent a lot of time teaching and working and things like that. So anything that has a piece of technology where you can measure yeah. what you've taught or, or yeah. how you've worked with, that's cool. So here's the quiz. So here's the quiz. So now we, we had that diagram a few pages back. We tricked you with some stuff in between. Now we're just seeing if you paid attention. And then what you do is you drag these little tabs up to what you think is the correct answer. And then I'm just going to randomly drag them up here. I'm not even going to worry about making them right. OK. Look at that. So, so once they get dragged up here, then you check your answer. And I got uh, two of them right and two of them wrong. So it's a way to check to see if you're actually getting the oh, material. Oh, and you had slideshows. Let me see the slideshows. Oh, slideshows. Well, actually, I think that's back here. Well, well, we every page has the ability to do something like this. Here we're talking about using a flash. This is a cattle egret photographed actually in Fort Myers Beach, Florida, not okay. far from where we're at. And it was backlit, sort of backside lit, mm -hmm. and so it needed fill flash. So here is the picture with fill flash. Okay. So it's nice to be able to, on the same page, without having to turn the page to see the difference, yes. you can see what's going on. That's true interactivity. Yeah, it really I mean, is. It's... And we've got, I mean, we've got slideshows, we've got video, we've got screencasts, we've got... Oh, the other thing that I want you to show is the... Uh, the panel? The, yes, you yeah. have to show the panel. Okay, so here's the slideshow. And uh, the slideshow is some of my wildlife photography. And then all the person has to do is hit the little arrow. And then they can just go to the next and one. And they can go through the slideshow and see the pictures. All right, all right, panel, 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 panel. OK. Show the panel. <laughs> see, the panel's cool. It's quite a ways towards the end of the book. This book is 78 pages long, by and the way. And look, obviously, guys, 
I wanted to do two things with this. Not only are you looking at this from his book, and I really want you to, now tell us the name of the book again one more time. It's The Beginner's Guide to Light and Exposure. The Beginner's Guide to Light and Exposure. Obviously, we want you to take a look at that book at the iBookstore. But also, and I, and I, and I gotta give you credit for this, Scott. This is something that you learned, that you're working with, you know, iBook Creatives, and you're working with Rich Harrington, but anybody who has iBook author can go out and do this. Why wouldn't you? And, and here's the thing, anybody who wants iBook author and who has a Mac can have it for free. It's downloadable from the App Store for free. So you can do this. This, There's isn't, no just a question, this isn't just a question of saying, Scott, buy my book. This is also saying, yeah. this is something that anybody can have. So if you wanted to, I mean, I'm thinking about like the options. Like if you wanted to make a coffee table book of your own sure. photography, sure. if you wanted to make a book to sell on you know, wedding photography, it, the possibilities of this kind of stuff, I think, is just really. I do want to really quickly cool. show just just uh, this particular page here is the only thing we used uh, non-Apple products to make. We used Adobe's Premiere Pro to make an animation, but I'm just going to play this and and you can see that I don't know if we're having any audio. Uh, yeah, but that's be just because of the HDMI but, thing. Yeah, the the lights actually will turn on and turn off, and the we can, we've actually created an animation. If you're good at animations, you can incorporate them right into your iBook. If you know how to use Pages or mm -hmm. Keynote, mm -hmm. you can use those products. Oh, look, they're changed. Yeah, they're changed. So you can do an animation. You can do pictures that blow up, just like on any iPad, where you can mm -hmm. twirl them around and all that kind of stuff. But if you're really cool, oh, we can't miss this. This is Cranes in the Fire Mist. And here you can click on these little tabs, and, and I, I use these to teach what was yep. going on. And uh, these tabs make the thing a lot more interesting and interactive. And mm. then we'll do the panel. The piece de la resistance. So this is the backside of the Kenai mountain range, and okay. this is from Homer. This is the lodge we stay in whenever we go up to photograph eagles. And Look at that puppy. Nice. That's a five-page pan haul. Yeah, that ain't bad. So, so that's the point with this. Obviously, give us the book one more time. It's The Beginner's Guide to Light and Exposure. Okay, and that's by Scott Bourne. And Rich Harrington. And Rich Harrington. My buddy so Rich Harrington. obviously take a look at that book, but at the same time, if you have an iPad and you're a photographer, it's important for you to think about how to be able to share your work, how to be able to monetize your work, how to be able to market your work. Take a look at iBooks Creative, Take a look at the iBooks author and take a look at Mrs. Scott Bourne. Thanks. Hey, it's great being here. Hi, my name is Dave Black, and I'd like to welcome you to Kelby Training, where you can come join me on my light painting landscapes class. One of our locations is going to be at one of the most famous, iconic barns here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Not only will we do light painting there, but we will also do some soft focus technique. The site survey will give us an opportunity to look at our subject and start to figure out where we'll have camera position and where we would be applying the light painting from. Now just because we're out here in the great outdoors in a big national park, don't think you can't do these at home. All the basics and fundamentals that we'll cover in this video will teach you how to get into light painting landscapes, whether you're out here in Teton National Park or right in your very own hometown. Come to my light painting landscapes video at kelbytraining.com. I hope to see you then. Welcome back everybody to Photography Tips and Tricks. RC here now. All of this stuff would not be possible without the folks over at Kelby Training. Guys, if you're into photography, whether you're a beginner or you're an expert and you're looking for inspiration, how-to techniques, something to walk you through from very beginner to great inspiration, Kelby Training is the place you're gonna wanna go. Go to kelbytraining.com and take a look. We've got some phenomenal classes from the world's best teachers. We even have Dave Black, who has a brand new light painting class that's out today. So take a look at that over at kelbytraining.com. But before I go on and on and on about Kelby Training, I actually have one of the instructors from Kelby Training, my co-host here at Photography Tips and Tricks, Mac Laskowski, who's gonna talk to us about his mobile gear. Thanks, man. So uh, I got my uh, I got my tripod here, mm -hmm. and I wanted to talk about photographer tripod leg warmers. 
So a lot of people don't know, but you know, your tripod, when you get your tripod out there in the cold, its legs get cold and it operates much less efficiently when it's cold. That's total BS. <laughs> but my, my leg warmers here have nothing to do with the tripod legs. Um, it's, uh, I, I wanted to talk about the fact that I use these things on my tripod legs, not because it does anything to the tripod, but because it saves my hands when it's cold out. So here's the thing, when you're out there, and you're walking around with your tripod and you just hold the bare legs, it gets really cold. For some reason, these things are just like conductors of extreme cold temperatures. So they take whatever cold is out there and they make it 10 times worse and translate it right to your hands. So what I do is at any hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever it is, um, you can buy this insulation, it's pipe insulation. You can put it over your tripod leg. They, they actually sell official ones too if you just go onto B&H Photo or just Google it. Just do tripod uh, leg covers, tripod leg warmers even some places call them. But th this is just insulation that you'd buy in a hardware store. You wrap it around the tripod leg. Um, there's a couple of things you could do with it from that point. You could just take tape. I've seen lots of people just take duct tape and just wrap it around here so that this stuff doesn't come off and it protects it because it's just kind of foam. Um, you could wrap tape around it or you can find some type of a, a cloth to put over it. This one is actually, even though I have a really right stuff tripod, um, don't tell anyone, but this is actually Gitso. This is like a, a cover from Gitso. So if you just go on to B&H Photo, again, go on to Google, just do a search for tripod leg covers. You'll find the actual padding. If you wanna buy that, it's a little bit more expensive if you buy it from a camera or a tripod company than if you buy it from a hardware store. But the leg covers are a little bit more fine-tuned, so you wanna buy a leg cover or if you don't want to tape it, I guess is, is what I'm saying there. But either way, it's a great way as you're walking around out there in the cold, you got your tripod over your shoulder, you're not holding an extremely cold tripod leg. Now, speaking of tripods, this is a horrible segue to Dave Black's new class. So you're gonna see a tip from Dave Black here. All I can do is tell you, I was out with Dave Black when he was in the Grand Tetons and he did this class. It, it is amazing. There is crazy scenery, but more importantly, Dave is a master at light painting. Just watching him teach his class realized he is an incredible master at this and there's nobody that I'd wanna learn from light painting from, but Dave Black, let's go check out his tip. Hey guys, I'm Dave Black, and I'm here to give you a couple of tips on light painting. Now light painting is long exposure work, usually done uh, in a dark uh, studio, or in, in this case, we're out in the uh, national parks, and uh, that would be nighttime photography. These are long exposures of about 30 seconds or a minute, something like that, and we're actually painting the light on the subject, the trees, the landscape, the grass, whatever it might be. Well, to do that, I use a rather large handheld spotlight. It's got two million candles of power, and that is called a Brinkman, a Brinkman uh, Multi Max here, and it tends to spill the light to the side a little bit, so sometimes I'll put a honeycomb grid over it, and that'll channel the light down so I can control the amount of light that I paint the subject with and not have it spill over parts of the picture that I don't want light on. Very, very handy, that's the honeycomb grid. Uh, my other little tip is gonna be, well, how do you trigger the uh, camera if you're you know, standing 50 or 60 yards away from the camera and you're trying to apply the light from the Brinkman from an off-camera location? Well, I actually use the Pocket Wizard uh, Multi-Max transceiver. That is both a transmitter and receiver, depending on what mode you switch it on. The receiver sits on top of the camera and connects to the 10 pin port uh, connection area. Here's the transmitter right here. And I can be over 100 yards away and trigger the camera so that the shutter opens. And then from that off camera location, I can start applying the light with my Brinkman. And, uh, and see back here on our picture, we've actually got moonlight kind of helping to light up the sky, but then we have my uh, light from the Brinkman, light painting all along the shoreline of the river here, my uh, uh, beautiful yellow cottonwood trees and the grass. I get that long exposure on the water, which looks beautiful, but I add my own light and can do so by using these two tips that we just talked about. So if you wanna learn more about light painting, how to use the Brinkman, how to use the Pocket Wizard system, 
and see exactly how to learn light painting. Come see my videos at kelbytraining.com. Glad to have you along. We'll see you then. Do you ever find yourself getting frustrated? You know you want to make a new picture, but you just can't seem to come up with an idea? Sometimes everything you need can be right before your eyes. We don't always get the chance to find the perfect background. We don't get to go to exotic locations, but everything we need could be just around the corner. There's so many things around me and make my own unique backgrounds. Now, of course, we don't always get to work with professional models. Most of the time, we'll end up photographing the girl or the guy down the street. But we've got our idea, we've made our background, we've got our model. All we need to do now is make a bit of a character and then put it all together. I'm Glyn Dewis. Come and see my class over on Kelby Training. <laughs> Who put that there? <laughs>